Hi Celie, today I would like to show you how I made this sculpture out of a copper sheet using some air chasing techniques. I'm going to show you the whole process step by step. I'm also going to show you some experiments that I've done with the patina to get to that result. Enjoy the video! Before working on the main piece, I decided to try it out on a small scale because until that point I wasn't sure if it's going to even work. So starting small is a great way to test it out. Also because I knew I can use that to do some tests later on with the patina. I realized the kind of tool that were necessary to achieve this effect. In that case it was a sandbag, a pear shaped plastic mallet, a bullpen hammer and a set of dapping tools in different sizes. In terms of the dimension, I've noticed that there's a clear reduction in size. So my finished piece is 16 cm roughly and the original cut was almost 19 cm. So there's approximately 20% reduction in size. Now I took a big piece of copper 0.9 mm thick to create this sculpture. 0.7 could have been fine as well. I use a compass to create a nice big circle. Cutting it with my jigsaw and a metal blade, there's different way to cut it. Personally, I prefer jigsaw because it's quicker, cleaner and easier. I use a flap disc to smooth the edges and a blender by Norton Vortex to smooth them even more. Now, in terms of the size, my disc was almost 33 centimeter and my final pieces was just under 26 centimeters. So once again, roughly 20% reduction in size. To work on that sheet of copper, I need to anneal it first. Now, if you work with copper on a smaller scale, a small torch with propane like this one works absolutely fine. But on a bigger scale like what I'm about to do, I need to get the big boys in. So as you can see, I have a big propane cylinder to work with and an oxygen cylinder. And both of them are connected to my torch. And I use the adjustable valves on my torch to decide just the right amounts to create the best flame that's gonna come out of the nozzle. So I switch it on and start with propane first and then I slowly bring the oxygen in and it's a game of back and forth and just finding the right amount to get a really nice blue flame. The combination of propane and oxygen will make it much hotter than if I was working with propane alone. And then I start the annealing process by moving around the torch over my piece and you can see it changing. And I find it fascinating the range of colors you can get, it's just a beautiful uh, spectacle every time. The idea and the goal is to get to this cherry red and I can see the whole plate is getting darker and I can see that behind the flames I can have a nice cherry red following me so that's a good color. Quench it into water buckets, in that case it's almost too small, I have to do it in different parts. Dry it up and at that stage you can see it, it's really really soft like butter, perfect, I can work with that. I position my piece on the sandbag and start hammering. So at first I ignore the edges. I hammer it with a plastic mallet and gently rotate in turning the piece around and I keep hammering inwards up to the point I get to the center of my piece. Now as you can see it looks a bit rough, that's absolutely fine. The edges are heavily folded, that's absolutely fine by me. I can feel that the copper is getting stiffer so I need to get back under the torch and anneal it again. I'm going to need to anneal the piece many times along this project and I'm not going to share the footage every single time but I'm going to mention it when I anneal the piece and quetch it. Now for my second round I keep ignoring just the edges but I'm getting closer to them and I keep rotating the piece all over again until I get to the center of it. Now you can see it's getting nicer and more of a dome. It looks really bumpy and it's not smooth but that's absolutely fine by me. I've got some nice fold that I want to keep on the edges. And I went back to anneal the whole piece again. Now on this round I'm getting closer and closer to the edge and I read down the whole thing, go all over it until I get to the center of it. Once that is done then I decide to hammer the fold. Didn't need to get too tight but I wanted to keep those fold in place and keep the metal tight on the edges to keep this overall rounded shape. Now I'm back to anneal the piece again so it's nice and soft and start to working upside down. I've positioned my copper on a piece of rubber so it will hold it in place a little bit. To my bullpen hammer and start hammering on the edges first. I need to create some restriction and tightness all around it. And then I slowly went upward and start to hammer in different position randomly uh, my shape from above. It was about tightening it up, restrict it so that it will stay upward as long as I can but at the same time hammering it so that I slowly have those folds starting to show and you can slowly start to see the design taking shape. 
I find it useful to keep rotating and moving the copper around so that I can hammer it from different angles. When I see part of the copper that needed to be raised, I just flip the copper around, hammer it from underneath so that I can raise it uh, further. And then from above, I was able to get my ridges again. And that's something I've been doing back and forth all the time. And I love the flexibility that the copper offer. If you're not satisfied with one shape, reverse it, hammer it back, and then get back up so you have something to work with and you can create new ridges if you want to. And it started to become more and more clear where my ridges were, the kind of movement I had. And I started to use some dapping tools as well to get more precise because so far it was freestyle hammering the way in and I started to get a bit more defined into where I want my blow. The dapping tools were useful in different sizes as well, depends on how tight I wanted my ridges and how small I need them just to be able to get in there. And it's easier to see with a close up here how you can really easily define, okay, this spot here needs to be raised. I put my finger on it, flip it so I know exactly where to apply it. And I use the tapping tool, not just in one direction, but in different directions. So you can create more of an interesting ridges instead of just one dots coming up. And then same way when you turn it around, I can go around with the tapping tool from different angles as well to slowly and carefully shape up the ridges that I want. I had to anneal it again to make it softer. This is what it looked like. You can see all the edge are getting flatter and flatter. So I decided to use my plastic mallet and went back to what I was doing previously of almost sinking a ball and then flip it over. I used the bullpen hammer to much more aggressively uh, went back in. So that was really useful to create some volume. And it turned out that actually working with the bullpen directly from the back and hammering with sheer brutality was much more efficient to get the shape I wanted. And it took many trips back and forth with the torch to anneal it, soften it and work in again. It was surprising how quickly the piece was going back flat, so I had to raise it all the time and restrict it, hammer it back in. Hammering the edges really was necessary in order to create the volume so that I can have something to work with. And slowly but surely the pieces start to take shape. Once I was happy with the overall design, I went back at it with the dapping tool in different sizes, usually starting with the quite large dapping tool. Once I have an overall design, it was easier to see which spots still need to be raised and where I was needing some ridges to create a more cohesive effect. And I love this flexibility that the copper offers of just changing your mind, adding stuff, removing stuff. And I found it absolutely fascinating to see the colors change with the torch. I mean, look at this range of tones. It's just beautiful. And I've noticed that actually once folded, the piece took much more time to anneal. Initially, it was quite a quick and easy job. But once you have the fold, it seems like the heat was getting lost quicker. So you have spent much more time just heating the whole thing up. But it's beautiful to look at. Now I was happy with my overall shape, but it needs softening. So I use my dapping tool, starting with the larger one and try to smooth things up as much as possible. And I keep changing my dapping tool and getting smaller and smaller so I can get into a smaller area. And I was happy with that. Honestly, I could have spent an hour or two more smoothing everything up, but it was the first time ever I tried to do this effect. I was quite happy with it. It needed a good cleanup. So I used my drama with the extension bit and some abrasive wheels. Those are good overall to get in there. And because of the design and so many fold, it's quite hard to reach every area. And the one thing I found that can do the job a bit better is those tiny little wire brush. Those were the only one who can get in there and soften things up. I have plenty of burr, which are much more aggressive and they will leave mark. That's the one that I found out of all my toolkits and all my bits, be able to do the job and soften those hard to reach area without leaving marks. So this is my piece cleanup. Now, before doing the patina on this one, I wanted to do some tests. So I took the piece that I did initially as a test and divide into four different sections. On the top right, I decided I put nothing on it. Bottom right, only vinegar and salt. On the bottom left, I will have the vinegar, paper soaked ammonia and salt. And the top one with paper soaked ammonia and salt, but no vinegar. So I apply the vinegar on the bottom two parts. Then I soaked some paper towel with ammonia. This stuff stinks, so you need to be outside for ventilation and have a respirator on. Sprinkle some salt over it, apply it onto my piece on the left top and bottom side of my piece, place it into a plastic container, raise above the plastic pots, 
and then I fill the plastic container with ammonia. Close up the container, leave it for a few hours. Now this is what it looked like after a few hours. You start to have some nice blue. And I took it out and start analyzing my results. And that was quite surprising. So the top part when there's nothing, there is barely any reaction. Okay, I can see that coming. But what I was surprised is the bottom right with vinegar and salt, it didn't have the paper towel soaked with ammonia on it and still have probably one of the strongest effects. So I was really impressed with that one. On the bottom left, you have the vinegar, paper soaked ammonia and salt. It was almost, almost similar in, in a sense. I didn't expect to have so little difference between those two bottom parts. Now, the biggest surprise of all was the top left where I have paper soaked ammonia and salt, but no vinegar. And I was surprised to see that there's barely any blue in there. So, okay, vinegar was the key ingredient. Now I took my main piece, clean it up with acetone and try to get in there with honestly just the full make it difficult. But anyway, clean it up and then use the key ingredient vinegar, spray it all over my piece, sprinkle some salt, place it onto a larger container, transfer the little container with ammonia in it and I decide to add more uh, plastic cup and fill it with leftover ammonia for my previous project. Now it looks blue because of the chemical reaction of ammonia, vinegar and salt, but it's not that I introduced something different. This is literally ammonia. It's just a leftover because this stuff stink and I'd rather not get rid of it if I can use it for something else. Then I soak some paper towel with some ammonia, sprinkle some salt over it, and reverse onto my sculpture. Because I was working on a much larger scale, I thought it would help to have even more ammonia against it. Close up the container. This is what it looked like after three hours. I started to have some nice blue, they're great. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I don't need this paper towel over it. So I'm gonna leave it on the side from now on, add a bit more salt because honestly, why not? Put the top back in and let it stick overnight. So now this is what it looked like roughly after 12 hours total. It looks quite nice. You have some gorgeous uh, blue in there. I was happy with it, but I thought, is there a way I can actually amplify it further? So I decided to add more vinegar just to test it out, add a bit more salt and get back in the tank for another, I think two hours. So I'm not sure it actually made a real difference, but it was worth the experiment. I had some gorgeous colors. My first priority was to get rid of the vinegar and the ammonia. And I used some water in a spray bottle, spray it over it. Now there was so many fold that it was very difficult to get the liquids to come out. And at some point I realized actually having two blocks of wood on either side and put it upside down might allow more liquid to come out. I also tried to remove all the salt that was stuck in there absolutely everywhere. The main transformation happened when it was fully dry a few hours later and it was just gorgeous. I was so excited by that. It was the first time that I achieved uh, this kind of result and it was really, really exciting. I wanted to create some contrast. So I used my Dremel and the polishing wheels and I went over all the ridges. I like the transition and the difference in color and contrast. There was lots of dust everywhere and it was really tricky to get it out. So I ended up using the vacuum. I was so happy with it that I decided to do a little photo shoot because I knew the sealer will darker everything up. But in the end, I had to seal the piece. So I use a Restore Leon Crystal Clear Matte and I apply one coat over it, let it dry for an hour and apply another coat. Now, if you know of any clear matte sealer for metal that doesn't darken the metal, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. Even though the whole piece went darker and I've lost some of the lighter shade, especially the turquoise, I think I'm quite happy with it. Overall, it's just a lovely, interesting piece. And as a sculpture, it's got lots of movement, lots of life to it. So it was worth the experiment. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take good care of yourself and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.